making a plaster and lath wall. So I tried to do this one handed and it worked out okay. First I took a bunch of strips of strip wood and uh, those were gonna be my lath. I went and cut up some bigger pieces that would be my frame. And I'm doing this all one handed or mostly one handed, which is uh, really intelligent. So I cut the pieces for the frame, dipped them in some wood glue and then went about gluing up a square. As you can see, once again, one handed. Then once I got square glued, I took my lath and I dipped it in the glue and I wanted to do a diagonal type of lath. So I glued a couple sections where I was gonna put my lath down and then I went and stuck my lath to it. Problem is cutting this with one hand is really tough. So I laid down the lath and tried to cut it with one hand and it didn't work. So I had to stop the camera and got my daughter to start recording for me. And here I started laying down my pieces of lath. They're all separated by about a 16th of an inch. I just covered the whole square with the lath. And of course, obviously it's sped up two times the speed, but you know, I don't know, maybe I just worked this fast. And there we go, it's getting it covered. We're about uh, two, a third of the way done. There we go. And I didn't even care if I cut straight on the edges. I did that afterwards, as you'll see here. Once it was all glued together, I took my X-Acto knife and uh, tried again with one hand, but I uh, went and cut all the edges, trimmed all the boards. There it is really quickly trimmed up. I'm gonna make this a really nasty wall, so I don't care exactly if the edges are perfect. So there was a lot of uh, open void space, so I wanna put some kind of framing in there. So I took some more of my eight by eight, uh, eight by eight pieces of wood, cut them up, and I wanted to make some knee braces. I cut up some knee braces and glued them in to the inside of the wall, just to give it a little bit of character. Not very prototypical, but uh, makes for an interesting wall at the end. Now here I'm using my Ammo by MIG Rubble and Ammo by MIG Europe Earth and my Silverwood Builders and Scale Stain. This is my very favorite type of stain. I also really like Matero stain. And uh, you know, if there was some of it sitting in my workbench, I would have used that also. But uh, this is what I had right in front of me. So. I put that on and then I took some pan pastel. This is actually raw umber pan pastel. I love putting this on wood. It helps give a little bit of a dry look and also a little bit of a brown color. So I was putting, mixing, mind you, I mixed my Builders and Scale silver wood and used that to dissolve my pan pastels. And I just start wiping it on different boards. As it dries, the color lightens up substantially, gives it a neat kind of a dry, dusty look. And obviously, once again, doing it with one hand, so my board's moving all over the place. And this is the Rebel and your Earth. I do the same thing, just like I did with my Pan Pastel. Put that on random boards, kind of blotch it on. Doesn't matter if you're a little messy because it will lighten up and it will be all over the boards anyway. This is an old nasty wall. I also go over any glue spots with this. Uh, it helps uh, dull them out and makes them kind of disappear. So any wood glue that I have that's squirted out or squeezed out around the cracks, I just tap them with the pan pastels or the ammo pigments. Of using ammo products obviously okay so we're here with the silver wood once again just kind of covered up and faded out some of the chalks a little bit sometimes I'll get a little thick I just fade them out with more alcohol you can use regular old alcohol or your stains to do this stains work really good for dissolving pan pastels or moving pigments around all right now it's time for the plaster. What do we use for plaster? Well, we use plaster, actually, vinyl spackle. So my vinyl spackle is almost empty and kind of dried out. And once again, I tried to do this one-handed, flipped it over to the flat side, 
and I used my little paint palette as a plaster palette and I started smearing it all over the board. Very hard to do one handed like that. You know, just smearing it all. I'm actually putting it on lightly, but it's enough to get that plaster to look at that squeeze through the boards on the back side. So I covered the entire thing. Oh look, what a mess. So I actually come through and I scrape out all the excess. So uh, all the excess comes out, put it back in the cup to use it again. And once it all is cleaned up, I go and wet the plaster a little bit. It's still a little dry, um, but I take that plaster and I push a little bit more through so a little bit does start popping through the boards. So I start with a heavy coat and there you go. You can see it pop through the boards a little bit in a few places. Um, I wanted to cover the wall because I wanted the back, the other side of the wall to be seen also. So I took some water just out of my paint bucket where I wash my brushes and I dripped it into the plaster and mixed it up and I'm coating the rest of the front. You can see there it's really liquidy now but that'll be good. Throw it on and just kind of cover the whole wall. It can be sloppy though. It's supposed to be old broken plaster. So we're going to paint this side and you're actually going to see both sides of the wall. So I wanted to kind of pat out everything, so I just wet my finger, put a little spit on my finger, and started wiping down the front of the plaster just to get rid of any real high spots there. Just got to be careful there that you don't get any fingerprints in because they're not very scaled. There we go, cleaned up the board and looked okay to me, and stuck it in the fan that I have running in the garage, and that helped dry. It's uh, 100 degrees in the garage, so uh, that basically convection oven blowing on the plaster and it pretty much dried dried enough at least to work with in a matter of a couple of minutes once again put some silver wood yeah actually on the plaster and that kind of weathered up and gave the plaster a older look as it dries it lightens up quite a bit there we go and i wanted to put some rubble color on the bottom of this it's my ear of birth uh, it's rubble and i just kind of put it around in different places on the plaster same thing on the back. Just want to darken it up in random areas. Uh, I don't want a very uh, even look to anything. So I'm darkening up all the plaster that popped out of the back there. Heavier in some areas, lighter in some other areas. Flip it over. There you go. Clean it up and uh, dry it off once again. Look at that. It starts to dry. Look at the back of that wall. It looks fantastic. And it keeps it no time. Obviously those boards and scale are about a foot wide, but I don't really care. I'm making it up as I go. Uh, I want to put a couple cracks in this plaster, so typical, uh, just bring the X-Acto knife and kind of randomly zigzag it around into the plaster. Um, this plaster is still a little wet, so it didn't quite crumble the way I wanted it to, but that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Scraped off some high spots, and uh, there's some other areas. There's a couple little fingerprints I scraped off. I don't care if it shows white. You know, that's perfectly fine. They're cracks. They might be a little lighter or a little darker than the existing wall. And here's a fingerprint. So I'm going to take that fingerprint off of there. There we go. <laughs> Put my bottle of Diasol down so I can hold it and just kind of scratched off some of the highs. Giving it kind of a random look. Now this is an Ammo by Bing Avena's oil brusher and uh, this is olive green. I've obviously used this thing a ton. They're really hard to open one-handed. And generally, if this plaster was dry, this would work perfectly. It was a little wet, so you'll see what happened here. Put a couple little spots down, and you actually wash this out using odorless enamel thinner, or enamel odorless thinner, whatever you want to call it. And take a brush, and you wash it out. You can see how it starts washing out very well. But because this plaster is still a little wet, it actually started absorbing the color really quickly. So. I decided instead of just using the odorless enamel thinner, you can see it has a good look, but the plaster is soaking it up quite a bit. I decided I would use some ammo shaders with the airbrush. You only need a couple drops, literally two or three drops. Um, I dropped my airbrush a couple times so the cup's all messed up. There's a light green ammo shader, a couple drops, this stuff's super thin, and I just shot it on the wall. There we go getting the mossy kind of effect on the wall. Uh, going up the wall, this is random. You know, I keep them mostly at the bottom, but you can run some up the sides a little bit, up the middle. 
um, just how kind of uh, moss or mildew would grow on the wall. Just on the back side too, you can see how I kind of get in there under the gussets and go up the side a little bit, up the center. Random, uh, somewhat of a pattern, but uh, I don't want it too obvious of a pattern. Now I took my uh, Bombay Black India ink and alcohol wash, which I have right here. This is my dark, it's my really dark wash. I have a couple of them, a lighter wash too. And uh, just started tapping the bottom of the wall. Uh, random once again and then I almost did like what would be like a dry brush over top of some of the areas with this now yes it's super dark but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take some just plain old alcohol I can keep in a in an empty ammo bottle and I just start thinning it out I do this while it's still pretty wet and uh, there we go just mix it all up and there we go. wash it just thin it out really really good and uh, of almost make a random uh, thinning of the different areas. Uh, then from there, I went and actually started streaking, putting a couple little streaks at the top. Uh, I grabbed some of the thicker India ink from the bottom uh, and used that to make some streaks. Didn't have to grab any more India ink, just used some that was already in the wall and started streaking down the wall. The far uh, two right streaks I didn't really like I needed to feather them out a bit, so I grabbed some alcohol and started feathering them out so they didn't have such a hard edge to them. So there we go. You can still see some of the boards behind the plaster. I really like the look. Backside, it did the same thing. I uh, wanted to have like a, almost like a black mold kind of look. So uh, I still had some Indian ink in my brush and just started uh, dabbing, dabbing it over top of the green areas. There we go. Uh, there's some. There's some more added, some more India ink. And you can see it starts fading out. All you gotta do is put a little alcohol over that when you have really heavy alcohol wash. And it'll start looking like moss. It looks really, really good. So just random areas. You don't wanna be even with this. Just a few areas in the green. You'll see, uh, if you look at old mossy walls, whether they're stone or wood, you're gonna see this type of old black moss growing on most of them. Um, some of the areas where the walls were still wet or where there's actually no little moss growing. There we go. I stuck it back in the fan, dried it out, and you can see how awesome it looks. It looks really, really good. You can see the uh, lath kind of through the back. There's the back side. I was really, really happy with it. I think it looks great. Random colors. Anyway, thank you for watching.